I thought that Total War was dead after Rome 2, because Rome 2 was such a mess that I didn't think there was really any way back from it, because they already had an empire, and then Rome 2 happened right after Shogun 2, and I thought, how do they regain the trust of their audience after that? And not only did they not immediately redeem themselves, but they announced Warhammer, which was just a really bizarre, strange thing to do. Warhammer instead of Lord of the Rings, just add an insult to injury. And I lost all interest in Total War, and I went the longest time I ever went without playing, without even launching a single Total War game since I started playing Total War with the demo of the first Total War game, Shogun 1. That was the longest space of not even thinking about Total War in my life since Total War began after Rome 2 and it lasted nearly five years. And what broke that hiatus? Three Kingdoms. So Three Kingdoms was the first Total War game that I played in nearly five years and it got me paying attention to Total War again because I had a surprising number of people come to me and tell me that Three Kingdoms was like Shogun 2. It was almost as if they had gone back to making good games again. I can't really think of any examples of that happening. The closest I can think of is Anno, but then Three Kingdoms comes along and people are telling me that it's actually good. So I give it a try and the game has a decent frame rate, it runs well. It seems to be getting things right. The campaign map has diplomacy working, which was a pleasant surprise. But the longer I played it, the more I realised that they really didn't invest in the battles whatsoever. The game is on the same engine that they've had since Empire, and the gameplay is not actually very good where it matters in the battles. So I started to lose hope again, and then Troy of course comes along and started me off with critiquing. So I was hopeful about Three Kingdoms for a while, but then I started to see the problems with it and see that it didn't really have replayability like Shogun 2 had for me. So I gave Three Kingdoms a shot and I faced all the challenge it had to offer and then I dropped it. But I really didn't see this coming. Terminated after two years. They announced this with a video and it was not thought out properly and it wasn't done well. And I've had this video open in four tabs, so I have a funny chronology here of the ratings and also the video title. So watch this. Here is the original video title, The Future of Total War Three Kingdoms. And we've got a ratio of about 5 to 1. And then when you fast forward, it's changed to moving on from Total War Three Kingdoms dev update. And you're about to have the dislikes exceed the likes. So there's before there's after. <laughs> so this did not go well. If they're changing video titles, that seems a bit desperate. Just shuffling shit around, trying to improve the situation in whatever way they can. And then if you fast forward again, because I, I opened this video in another tab, and I have a tab clutter problem, but this is one of the benefits. <laughs> Sometimes I can do things like this. And then I've added my dislike by now, and you can see that the dislikes are just overtaking the likes. And then when you fast forward to right now, whew, it's been fucking ratioed. So there's a shitstorm. We have a shitstorm situation. And obviously, as someone that has been subjected to shitstorms at the behest of <laughs> the people that are currently on the receiving end of one, I think this is pretty funny. So, I'm going to just laugh at this as well as cover it. So, let's watch this video and see what it says. It's been two years since the release of Total War Three Kingdoms and what a journey it's been. With each of our seven DLC releases, it's been a real pleasure to watch this game's loyal community blossom. And in that time, we've been able to see you do what you do best, wage total war. <laughs>
across all our players from over 200 countries. A total of 33 million soldiers have been splattered by trebuchets. More than 5 million soldiers have been killed by Liu Bu. And 8.7 million Liu Bei campaigns have been forged. We think that's pretty impressive. And we're ecstatic that so many of you have put your powers of strategic thinking to the fearsome challenge of our game. Now it's time to talk about the future of Three Kingdoms. With the release of Fates Divided, we've completed our content for Total War Three Kingdoms. It's now time to turn our attention to a new... No, you've not. What the fuck? <laughs> no, because of course you said that you were going to be doing the North. You were going to expand into the North and also other timelines. They have videos on their channel where they announce an intent to do that. Let's find it. So with our chapter packs, we're very lucky when we're picking our time periods that actually we can go through the book, the story itself comes off the page, and there are a variety of situations, both large and small. Big epic moments such as the Three Kingdoms themselves, for example, or the Battle of Guandu, like important moments that actually are required to tell the story of the Three Kingdoms period. We're also kind of keen to, to expand that world further. Obviously China's a giant country, a lot of areas we haven't yet had a chance to explore properly. Uh, sort of the north and, and the south, you know, the, the fringes of, of the land. In addition to all this cool new content, uh, we're obviously going to continue filling out the world with new characters, new factions, new features. We'll be looking at old features as well, uh, enhancing those. One of the other things we're always doing is we're always looking at our community what the players are saying, what they want to see, what they're looking forward to from the Three Kingdoms period. With that in mind, we're constantly looking at free additional content that we can add to the game. Things that not just improve the experience of players with the DLCs, but of players with the base game as well. We're looking at things so much as like expanding the maps, changing things around. How do we bring in new characters, right? Every, every DLC we release, we're bringing in brand new characters who you've not seen yet. And as that continues, we'll continue to also look at our older content going back to factions that maybe aren't as strong or need some balancing, looking at those and actually trying to improve those as well and make them more fun to play. We've been listening to the community, getting a lot of feedback on board, and we're sort of aiming to make Three Kingdoms the best game it possibly can be. So that was on March of 2020, and we're now in June of 2021, 15 months later, and that's a complete 180 in direction. They haven't committed to that at all. Game. Now it's time to talk about the future of Three Kingdoms. With the release of Fates Divided, we've completed our content for Total War Three Kingdoms. What the hell? <laughs> so they've completely contradicted themselves. They obviously planned on doing way more, but they've just axed it. There's not going to be any more. It's now time to turn our attention to a new project in this amazing historic tale. Our team, who has been working from home over the past year, now has transitioned into pre-production for our next entry in the Three Kingdom universe, giving us a fresh opportunity to build on this incredible world. There are so many stories to tell, and we are so excited to be able to continue the journey with you. We'll share more of our direction and scope when we are able. But for now, we're happy to tell you that we are increasing our focus on the novel's rich cast of the characters and their individual and unique narratives, taking the core of what makes Three Kingdoms so special and pushing it further. We're lucky at CA to have multiple projects in development at all times. This project gives us an opportunity to cement ourselves as a standalone team within the historical Total War umbrella and continue to produce Three Kingdoms content alongside some of the other historical projects we have in the works. As always, thank you so much for your support. Our community team will continue to share your feedback with us from our forums with the development team as we plot out the next exciting installment of Total War Three Kingdoms. But before we go, today we've released a substantial patch for Total War Three Kingdoms with details on our Total War blog and our Billy Billy blog as well. As always, thank you very much for your support. We will continue to the new to fare away the old and bring in the new. Thank you. So, if you're confused by that, you're not the only one. What did they even say there? They've rattled off some in-game statistics with splattering with trebuchets, and then they gave a really confusing set of statements that contradict each other. 
So on the one hand, they've completed their support. That's the word they used, completed. There hasn't been completion. There's not been the expansion into the north. They haven't done any of the other time periods they were describing. We haven't had the Three Kingdoms period of the Three Kingdoms, where you have Cao Cao, Liu Bei, Sun Quan, the Three Kingdoms. That was meant to be in, what, 210 or 220 AD. We're not going to get that now. If you compare what they intended to do with what they are now describing doing, they are going to stop doing DLCs for $10 each, and they're going to start charging full price for smaller games that resemble the Saga games that we've had, like Troy and Thrones of Britannia. I think they're going to be doing a game where it's just a saga of the Three Kingdoms, instead of having DLCs for these these small time periods that sell for $10, they're going to put marginally more effort into a full-priced miniature game that's a spin-off. And remember, Three Kingdoms is essentially a reiteration of Warhammer 1. If you've ever played Three Kingdoms and wondered why the crossbows are so bad in that game, it's because they were just copy-pasted over from Warhammer, and every single game they've made for years has just been Warhammer reclothed. Warhammer 2, Warhammer 3, Three Kingdoms, Troy. And now this, they're selling the same game over and over and over again. And now, even DLCs are not lucrative enough. So why did they do this? Why did they do a complete change in direction from DLCs to what sounds like a saga game? Well, (laughs) the answer is always money. They've realised that the Chinese audience they tried to tap into isn't as soft as they thought. What I think might be going on here is that Chinese people don't like buying tacky DLCs, and that might sound harsh, but these DLCs are not well supported. A lot of the time they have really buggy broken scripts that never get fixed, that never get properly patched and the gameplay can only change so much. When you're adding new units to these games all you're really doing is changing stats a lot of the time. There's not really much differentiation or new gameplay that's made possible and I think the Chinese quickly noticed that. They buy full games and they pick games carefully so In order to get money out of that Chinese audience, again, they're going to just have to repeat what they did with Three Kingdoms, which I think is the highest selling Total War game they've ever made. Because it worked. Expanding into the Chinese market was a success. They sold a lot of copies. They just don't sell DLCs after the game itself. So they're just trying to repeat the feat. They're trying to just make another full title and keep hammering away at that Chinese market. That's what it seems like. So let's go through some of what's going on here because this was not received well. You can already see from the dislikes that there's been a shitstorm. Let's start by looking at the comments, shall we? Yep, so everyone was just totally confused. We haven't had any clear statements really. You can look at some comments, like, alright, here's something here. No more DLC or patches for the existing Three Kingdoms game. It's funny how they have to actually clarify this. Holy shit. The the video itself wasn't clear enough, and obviously changing the title hasn't helped, but they have to actually say, to clarify. My god, and this was three days ago now. To clarify, no more DLC or patches for the existing Three Kingdoms game. However, we are working on a new game based on the romance of the Three Kingdoms novel. This will not connect to the first. This means that it's not going to be like Warhammer 1, 2 and 3, where all of the games are basically just one building on the other. They're just all the same game. In this case, it's going to probably be more like Attila to Rome 2, or Fall of the Samurai to Shogun 2. There's going to just be a weak connection. So there's going to be a lot of the work already done to make the game in the previous game. So a lot of recycling. The term asset flip comes to mind. And look at the top comment. We will stop working on Total War Three Kingdoms. Then we'll make a new Total War Three Kingdoms. (laughs) So that's summed it up. That's it. 
shameful display. Excuse me, we were promised a northern expansion. What are you doing, CA? That's a great thumbnail too. Total War Three Kingdoms future. Way to excite the fans only to crush their hopes. Wow, really? Let's take a look at this. Total War Three Kingdoms dev update. Oh my god, so they changed the thumbnail as well. Holy shit, they made a new thumbnail for the rebranding of the video. I love how you all smile when you kick the fan base in the balls. Title, The Future of Three Kingdoms. Video, There Is No Future. Edit, LOL, I see they changed the title now. <laughs> oh my god. You're going to move on from Total War Three Kingdoms without ever giving us a Three Kingdoms, period. One of the only reasons I bought this game was to play Liu Bei and Jing and the Riverlands. I feel cheated. And that's true. A lot of people bought this game with the expectation of being able to do things that they're never going to get to do. So that's an expectation that was given to them by how the game was marketed and advertised and that has been pulled. They've gone back on it. So it's understandable that everyone's pissed off. And yeah, this is the shitstorm on YouTube, but there's more shitstorms because we've got the press picking up on it. And of course, review bombing. The review bombing has begun. And this has continued. This was... This article was from two days ago, but this has continued. So there's a lot of red spikes. And... Yep, there's a lot of articles on this. Angry Total War fans are review bombing Three Kingdoms. So they totally misjudged the situation. And this is not the first time this has happened. This reminds me of something else. <laughs> I cited this in my video about the shilling situation. But look at that. Ratioed 1 to 10. We're not quite there in this case. But... Yep, this is a situation where they seriously misjudged the situation and are getting a shitstorm for it. Reddit is another place where shitstorms flare up and look at this. I made a video laughing at this thread on my second channel, but I'm going to just summarise this here. So someone posted and got nearly 5,000 upvotes. This is the fourth or fifth highest post on this subreddit. Over the past week, I should specify. Kindly leave Warhammer 3 out of this, please. No, we don't want to cancel our pre-orders. No, we shouldn't review Bomber Game because your game has ended its cycle. No, we shouldn't be attacked for not following your crusade. Yes, you can have our sympathy. No, we don't owe you any more than that. Look at the absolute state. Look at this garbage, 5,000 upvotes, look at how insecure they are, look at how scared they are. Holy shit, what a hard life Reddit life is. Yeah, see, look at this, this is a ridiculous situation. So the Total War subreddit is completely spazzing out. And then you've got damage control going on, so let's take a look at this. Someone posted a thread and got, how many, 1,500 upvotes. And are pointing out the Northern Expansion hasn't been delivered on. And gets 1,500 upvotes. And then, of course, PR rep from CA comments. This is an example of something I've talked about before as to one of the reasons we stopped what the teams are working on. What the fuck? What's this capitalization? Development is subject to change and plans do change all the time. If we do try and be transparent with our timeline, we do open ourselves up to accusations like these. Again, the majority of you are not like this like this <laughs> like this care to specify care to so please don't take this as a general comment but this is something that is taken into account internally and something i thought i'd point out here they're, they're just inserting themselves and doing it really indecisively and you get the impression that they're really frightened they're timid something like this it just comes across as passive aggressive they're not being direct they're not being helpful they're not being open just really strange strange messages coming from them. It's like they know that this is a situation that they can easily just pour gasoline on and have it explode. So they try and intervene. Like, they just can't help themselves. They have to come in and say something and they can't be decisive either way and they end up just giving you loads of fluff. That's what this was, this video. Because look at it, you're given you're given some bullshit statistics. I mean, what the fuck is this? Why are we getting statistics here? 
Who is this caring to? What, what, what kind of pandering is this? It's just fluff. So much fluff. So much placating being attempted. And if they were honest, they would just say, here's, here's what they would actually say. All of the Chinese people that bought this game, millions of them, lost interest in the game very quickly and have not been buying the DLCs. We're not going to get a return on our investment if we keep making these DLCs that they're not buying. So what we're going to do is try and repeat the initial feat by selling a full-priced game and it's going to just be one of these time periods that we were going to make except full-priced and a standalone game. That's what they would say if they were being honest. They would be like, this is a completely pecuniary decision that disregards our fans, our customers, everyone that bought the first game, and that disregards all of our passionate staff that wanted to express their ideas in these DLCs. This is just purely ruthless and financial and comes from above, and there's nothing we can do about that. We hope you like the new game. And sorry for the double dip. We know how shitty this is. <laughs> it wasn't my fault. Don't hurt me. <laughs> and look at this. I just ask that people direct that anger and upset at the company and not at individuals. Holy shit, this is really strange. So sometimes you see Twitter bios that say views are my own and not reflective of my company or my employer. But in this case, it's like a reverse Twitter bio direct that anger and upset at the company and not at me. <laughs> like, what is your job? Your job is to take the flack? What the fuck? <laughs> Basically just saying, fuck my company. <laughs> I don't like them either. Fuck them. I'm, I'm with you. Fuck them. Holy shit. <laughs> and then let's, all right, let's look at this one down here. Three Kingdoms game with a range of exciting scenarios, but not a single scenario contains the Three Kingdoms. CA on May 20th, 2019. Our hope is that eventually when you start a fresh campaign you'll get to decide where in the epic tale of the Three Kingdoms you want to dive in, picking from a range of exciting scenarios and challenges that reflect some of the most remarkable legends ever told. Yeah, so it should have came, we should have been able to start at the beginning of the Three Kingdoms period in 210 or 220 AD, but we're not going to get to do that in Three Kingdoms of 2019. Maybe we'll get to do that in Three Kingdoms of 2022 when it gets repackaged and resold for the double dip. That's my bet. That's what I think is going to happen. And here's something else. Look at this. We've got the moderators on the shithole subreddit actually deleting posts. 3k fans can't wait for more expansion packs. Creep Assembly realising they can make more money by just dropping 3k and produce another title. Three Kingdoms period. I can milk you. <laughs> And that gets deleted by the mods. Look at that. What rule did this break? What rule did this break? There are no rules that were broken by this. The mods deleted this on a whim. Were they told to delete this? Well, it's pretty obvious what happened. The PR people at CA were like, guys, help. And they used their own judgment to try and contain the shit show. But the thing is... People like me notice when they delete these posts. Like, I have people that tell me when these kinds of threads get deleted. I get people complaining to me about the mods, so what are they doing? What are they doing? Alright, and let's look at this as well. I don't mean to talk down to people, and I'm sorry if it came across that way. I don't think I phrased my initial comment correctly, and while I have tried to clarify, clearly the message isn't coming across. I was, of course, really stressed yesterday, as I'm sure many people were. Look at this leeway, just any leeway they can get, my god. I was in a rush to change it from the future of and made a typo, it's since been updated. What? What? In a rush to change the title? <laughs> they misspelled it, Total War 3 Kingdoms dev update, holy shit. Someone caught a typo. Alright, and this, let's cap it off here with this. So, because there's such a shit show and it's actually getting review bombed on Steam. Someone actually wrote poetry, and I think I saw a really funny a funny comment here. Let's find this, let's find this. <laughs> he, 
He's channeling the hundreds of exiled scholar officials from Chinese history who used poetry to express their anguish. This is how you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that CA has insulted and alienated the Chinese consumer base. Mad respect to my fellow Chinese, especially the excellent writing in both languages. And I'm going to do my best to read this guy's poetry, right? So this is the obituary of Three Kingdoms Total War of 2019. The game is good for what it is, but the dev news that came this morning is nothing short of an absolute betrayal. They hyped up the community for future DLCs, including the Northern Expansion, only to abruptly abandon ship and announce a new title with which they can reel in more cash. Enough said, and here is my poetic dedication to our beloved friends at CA. To the tune of Shui Diao Geto Tuo Tuo Shui Diao Geto No no To the tune of Shui Diao Ge Tuo <laughs> When comes the update I raise my glass to ask the sky Not knowing if the Calicia will procrastinate without a try I thought to inquire on the forums, but knew the mighty gods of greed care not for a single read. Let the complaints stack tall, for sales and profits come before all. Promises not fulfilled, dozens of developers stand ever so idle, yet all is supposedly done, with glamorous words they talk of the next one. Away with reviving the old, Come the mountains of jade and gold, scramble to have the next title sold. Care not for the feedback and comments, floating again with anger and laments. <laughs> oh my god. And this this was in Chinese originally and he translated it, so it's meant to go with the tune of this and I thought it was pretty funny. And apparently all the Chinese people liked it. And this guy actually found his way into my Discord and I asked him about why Total War Three Kingdoms DLCs do not sell in China and he confirmed my suspicions, which I have seen repeated elsewhere, that Chinese people just don't really want to buy DLCs. They don't want to spend money on things unless they're sure it's going to be worth it. They're not like we are. (laughs) <laughs> it doesn't really work. This expansion into this foreign market to try and tap into this audience. They just misjudged their audience, I think, just like they misjudged the reaction in the West to this announcement. They're just misjudging constantly. Just like they misjudged how I would handle being smeared. They just constantly misjudge and fuck up. And and remember, Three Kingdoms hasn't done as well as it should because... They haven't invested in the battles, which are the whole point. This is Total War. We want good battles, and the battles in Three Kingdoms are just not good. And they're not good because the game didn't have proper investment. What we need is a new engine and a return to gritty and tactical and properly simulated battles instead of this approach that Total War has taken since Rome 2 and has doubled down on with Warhammer. And of course, every game that I can see on the horizon to come from Total War is going to just be built on that crappy Warhammer foundation. So I have no hope, and I don't think you should have any hope either. And it seems like a lot of people don't, and people are finally waking up and pointing out that pre-orders are absolute cancer. And that's good. I'm happy to see that. I don't know if it's because I just made a video about pre-orders and how bad they are, but this thread here where people are losing their shit, when you scroll down past the vocal minority and get to the actually most frequent responses, you'll start to notice that a lot of people are saying, you pre-ordered. So this is what I would tell you to do. Don't buy this new Three Kingdoms game until the reviews come out and say that it's actually good. Which looks improbable because they're not out to make good games. 
this was a ruthless financial decision to kill Three Kingdoms, and that means that they're not focused on making good games. What they want is greater profit margins, and even the relatively soft Chinese audience that they try to break into hasn't given them that. So they're now trying to take a specific angle to attack that audience, and that's why we have this complete change in direction, I think, from DLCs to spamming annual full titles, full price titles, which is what is indicated by... Yeah, yeah, in in their announcement video, they actually say at some point that they have a team dedicated to making Three Kingdoms period games now. So what that tells me, I think, is that this game that they're working on is going to be the first of a series of games that are going to be developed by the same studio to just keep hitting that Chinese audience over and over again every year until it's no longer profitable. They're just trying to extract as much money as they can from that audience they've tapped into. And that is not good news for us. That should be a red flag. And if you were thinking about tapping out at Total War, it looks like you've got your excuse. If we find out that this game is not a prototype for testing a brand new Total War engine, that is a big red flag. If we find out that this is not going to have red cliffs with naval battles once again, That is a big red flag that shows a loss of ambition and purely a money grab motivation for all this. There are threads on the Total War subreddit describing broken scripts and bugs for Three Kingdoms DLCs that were released last year that are yet to be fixed. And if they have decided to abandon ever fixing that just so that they can chase more money with a completely different game, then that means 3k is now abandonware and they are saying fuck you to everyone that bought it with the expectation of it ever becoming a complete, dignified, worthwhile Total War game. Alright, hopefully I have done justice to this announcement, this subject, and offered some clarity to people to the extent that I can as an outsider, just looking on like the rest of you. Alright, see you next time. Oh, and don't forget that we are currently funding the prize pool for the June Shogun 2 Chad tournament, which is going to be streamed once again, if all goes well. The link to the GoFundMe is in the description, and your donations will be much appreciated for helping to put on a good show and make the finalists really play to win. Alright, see you next time. For people that want to support me, I have a Patreon, that's the best way to do it. Special thanks to Matteo Olivetti, Nerdington, The Rode 451, Halcyon, and Robert Sparks.